Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about and demonstrate a two player turn. I will do a separate video for a solitaire turn, but this will hopefully give you an overview of all the actions that you can perform in a two player game. So first off here, I've got a quick example set up and for every tank or armoured fighting vehicle that you are playing within the scenario, you will use one of these chipped counters here and so for example here with the yeah the Germans have got three and the same on this side with the Soviets three as well one for each tank we put all those into our cup or whatever you prefer and you blindly without looking pull one from the cup and that indicates which side can activate one of their counters so for example if I pull a Soviet counter here that means I can as a Soviet player I can activate any one of these as my choice which one I activate you cannot activate a counter a tank counter that has already been activated that turn so it has to be completely new so in this example none of these have been activated already because it's the start of a new turn so I can choose which one I activate so I'll activate, for example, this T-34, just here. Now, the different actions that I can perform. So first up is movement. And there is a separate video that describes how movement works in the game. Effectively, each tank has a number of movement points. And each hex has a movement cost. And I spend those movement points and I move within the hexes, uh, keeping the correct orientation of the counter to the hex. Um, so, for example, movement one point or something like that, for example. Second up is firing. So, for example, I can shoot at uh, targets that I can see that I have a line of sight for. And then I go through a series of steps, seeing if I can penetrate the opposing tank's armour and then roll for damage. And again, there's a separate video that explains exactly how combat works in the game. The other option I have is to use my smoke launchers if the tank has them and I have a smoke counter. Smoke is useful for screening and is useful for when in defensive. It, it has an impact on the combat if you're being fired against. So it can be useful for that. Next up is snap fire. And if I choose that, I have a snap fire counter that I can place on my tank to remind. Uh, snap fire is used when the tank is basically lying in wait, ready for looking for a target to present itself as it moves in your or that tank's line of sight. So, for example, if a tank is here and it moves um, as it's moving, uh, I can declare a snap fire on that target. Next is rallying. So, for example, if my T-34 has a shaken counter placed on it. Shaken is a result of combat, so it could be that T-34 has been hit, not caused any damage, but the crew are shaken by the experience, not performing at their optimum or their best in disarray. You can perform a rally action with a simple die roll to see if that crew you know, uh, can remove that shaken counter from the tank. And again, that's fully explained in the rule book. Next is the hold down, um, and I have a counter for that. So I can place a hold down counter on my tank, and the tank is getting into a very favorable, favorable position in the hex, presenting um, a less obvious or a less target to the enemy. Again, used predominantly when you're looking for a good, strong defensive position. And it can be that in some scenarios, some of the tanks you'll be facing are already in a hold down position. And finally, we have a repair action that I can perform. This is if there's been a mechanical problem with the tank. So for example, it's gun is jammed or the turret is jammed. And that represents the crew trying to fix the mechanical problem with the actual armored fighting vehicle itself. And again, it's a simple die roll to see if that is successful 
or not. The, and, and they are the actions that you can perform in the two-player game in your turn. Once uh, you have activated your tank and you have chosen what to do with it, and again, of those actions I described, just as a reminder, you can only perform one. So you can't move and shoot or move and do a repair, for example. You can only do one of those actions. Once you've done your one action, uh, I find it really useful to put that uh, pull counter either on the armoured firing vehicle itself or just behind it or underneath it, whatever your personal preference is, to show that you've activated that counter. So that if you then pull another from the cup, let's say, say for example, another Soviet counter, you know you can, you've already activated this one, so you can use this to activate one of those two there. Uh, it's entirely your choice how you do so. Just agree with your opponent when playing the two-player game. I put the counters often behind the, the actual tank, if this room permitting, or, or underneath it. Um, so hopefully that will give you an overview of the turn. Once the last pull chit has been removed from the cup and there's no more to take out, and effectively that turn is over, you'll check victory conditions, and then you'll move to the next turn and move the turn counter on, etc. And then go through that simple sequence again, playing out that turn. So yeah, hopefully that'll give you a good overview of the different actions that you can perform. These are all fully detailed, and obviously, in the rulebook. And like I said, there are videos pertaining to the spe some of those specific actions, such as movement and combat and snapfire. So please check those out. And uh, thanks for watching, as always.